So while everyone's talking about the R3 now, I decided to go ahead and focus on a different camera that was all the rage some time ago. A camera that made waves during last year's NFL season. A camera that I didn't even hear about until my cousin brought it up to me recently. He says to me, yo, did you hear about the 8K camera during the NFL games? That thing looks sick and the footage looks amazing. I was like, what? Why didn't I hear about this? So immediately I start searching because nowadays we all have the answers right at our fingertips, right? That's when I saw it. There it was, in all its glory. The 8K Megalodon, the camera that excited everyone at what's possible when they saw that footage. Wait a sec, is that a Sony a7R4 on a freaking gimbal? <laughs> yep. Turns out that this camera operator came up with the idea and got the go-ahead from the producers to use a Sony mirrorless camera on a gimbal, hook it up to a monitor, use Sony's autofocus and wirelessly broadcast a 1080p signal to the production team to broadcast in your homes with amazing footage that people mistook for 8K. Why? Because they thought the footage looked like a football video game such as Madden. You see, in the Madden series, they use a trick of blurring out the background when showing the players to make it look a bit more cinematic. So that type of logic was applied to this setup and it added a similar effect. What I don't get is that people know that their Xboxes and Playstations are not capable of 8K. So when they see these effects, why do they think that an 8K camera is the only thing capable of doing this? <laughs> Makes no sense. Anyway, it's a cool angle and camera setup that wasn't only cheap, but also keeps people interested in the players and the game, and totally ignores the fact that the stadiums were empty. So good job there. But while looking at the setup, I started to think, can I do it? Do I have what it takes right now without purchasing any additional equipment to not only pull off this setup, but to prove to you guys that this Megalodon shot is not the work of a super intense next generation camera? Well, let's find out. So I laid out all the equipment of mine right in front of me and had to plan it out. I gave myself rules. Rule number one, I must use only items that I've already purchased. And rule number two, I must be able to simulate the broadcast situation that was used for the NFL games. Okay, so here we go. So I had to see what was used exactly to build it so I can match it. So according to this hilariously bad article, they said it was an A7R4. Okay. They described it as a handheld like DSLR camera. <laughs> Wrong. But whatever. That's just written there so the audience could understand it. But just to clarify, the Sony A7R4 is a mirrorless camera, not a DSLR. Okay, so what next? They said it was fitted with a Canon lens. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not a Canon lens. It's a Sony 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master lens. I guess I can't trust this article. After I switched websites, I figured out that they used a Ronin S gimbal, then a monitor, and a wireless 1080p transmitter. Looks like he had a follow focus as well, but from what I understood, he was using Sony's autofocus because apparently it was a lot more accurate than manual focus to follow action. I couldn't agree more. So what comparable objects did I have? Well, I had the 24-70mm f2.8 L lens. Check. My R5. Check. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't judge me. I know it's an 8K camera and it's not fair, but hear me out. I'm not going to use 8K on this camera because for sports, more often than not, they're recorded at a higher frame rate than 30 frames per second. So I will set this camera to 60 frames per second in 4K. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to be transmitting in 1080p anyway, just like he did. How am I going to be transmitting this signal? Well, I'm going to be using this transmitter and receiver by Nereus. They don't sell this version anymore, but I much prefer it when compared to their new models. Simply because when you turn on the transmitter and receiver, they just quickly connect to each other. The newer versions won't connect unless they sense that an HDMI cable is connected and transmitting a signal first, which is dumb. Anyway, what else? I use my Zhiyun Crane too. Yeah, it's a few years old, but it works great. Why would I need another gimbal? And it'll work for this setup. Then a small Delve Cam monitor. It's a... Uh, not small, it's actually pretty big. I wish it were smaller, but it'll do the job. 
So yay! I got all the pieces, but damn. How do I power everything? Ah, uh, shoot. Okay, so R5 powered by a battery inside. No issue there. Gimbal is powered by its own internal battery, and it's fully charged, so I'm fine there. Two items left. The monitor and the HDMI transmitter. So I've got this base plate that I can use just to power both the monitor and the Nereus, thanks to its multiple connections. And all I gotta do is attach it to the side of the monitor. And... Darn. <laughs> no go. Think, think, think. Oh, I got it. You see, I had this funky little battery that's an NPF960 battery that comes with a port that you can plug a cable into to get power directly from it. And it fits in my monitor. Great. So I fit it into my monitor and then I plug the Nereus into it. I then grab a couple of HDMI cables to make sure everything's connected and boom, there it is. Oh my, <laughs> looks like I created somewhat of a Frankenstein's monster here. Now with more time, I'd of course organize the cables and make everything look nice and neat, but that's not the point of this test, I just want to see if it'll work. Okay, so I've got the thing set up, but now I need something to act like a signal receiver. I plugged the receiver to my computer using a Camlink HDMI to USB connector. This will help us monitor the visuals on my computer screen. And boom, there it is. Perfect. Wireless transmission from my camera. Yeah, yeah, you see the settings on the camera is 4K, but it doesn't matter what I have on the camera. The transmitter and receiver can only project 1080p signals at up to 60 frames per second. I'll just leave it at the higher resolution so that you can get the maximum clarity of the picture transmission. I'll also switch to 60 frames per second, which was what was used for the football games. Now, first test. To show you guys that I'm wirelessly transmitting, I'm going to take a quick stroll out of my studio into my bathroom. But I'll show you my computer screen so you can see it's working. My white balance was off, yeah, but whatever, you get the point. Alright, you're seeing this and you saw the football shots and you're immediately like, that don't look like the football shots where only the players were in focus. You're right. But hear me out on this one. I've got the same sensor size and similar lens to that of the Megalodon. So why didn't that first shot show anything impressive? Shouldn't that be enough? Well, there's one more detail we've got to pay attention to. If you look, the players themselves were playing in a huge football field. So this helps for the effect. The farther the background is from the subject, and the closer the subject is to the lens, the better the effect. The look was great, and it's the reason so many people thought it was next level of video. It was so good, even WWE took note and adopted that type of shot as well for their production. But I don't have a football field, or arena, so how will I pull it off? Well, I'll do the next best thing. <laughs> yep, fingers. Why? Because of perspective, my hands are small objects that can get really close to the camera, giving the impression that the rest of my studio is really far. So what do you get? Here it is. <laughs> is that 8K footage? No, it's 1080p footage at 60 frames per second. And that's how I did it. Now I hope people get the concept and realize that 8K was probably closer to the cost of the setup and not the actual resolution of the camera. So there. Thanks for letting me get this one off my chest. Subscribe? Like this video if it filled you in on something you didn't know about. Or if you liked it. Or if you didn't like it. <laughs> Thanks. See you later.